Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get accepted into medical school and other professional programs. Today, we'll be diving deep into the fascinating world of cell signaling with a focus on G proteins. This intricate system is pivotal for many physiological processes in our body. Let's unravel its complexity and why you should care for your MCAT. Starting off with what is cell signaling anyway? Well, cell signaling refers to the communication process that governs most of the activities of cells. It's like a cellular postal system, ensuring that the right messages reach the right destinations. This ensures the seamless function of our biological processes, from our heartbeat to stress. Oftentimes, what we're trying to do is figure out something from the outside of the cell to make something change inside the inside of the cell. That's why you'll find many different receptors within the membrane, shown here in blue. These proteins inside the membrane are trying to transduce or transmit a signal from the outside to the inside, causing some sort of intracellular change. Now, one of these proteins that does this quite often is called a G protein. G proteins are central to many signaling pathways, and they're named after their guanosine triphosphate, or GTP, as an energy source. They act as intermediaries, transferring the message from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. Think of G proteins as sort of a cellular middleman, ensuring that the signal actually is going to, well, get through. So how do these proteins work? Well, first, they become activated. When a signaling molecule, in this example, let's take a yellow hormone, comes and binds to a receptor on the cell surface, that causes the receptor to change its shape. And in biology, you're going to hear this all the time, form equals function. So if the form or shape is changing, the function's going to change. Okay, so we're causing a change. This is going to make the intracellular environment do something different. In this case, that difference is it can become activated. We can go from a GDP to a GTP, phosphorylate that GDP. The activated G protein then can detach. This whole thing comes off, has a couple subunits, alpha, beta, gamma, and is going to move along the membrane, transferring the signal by act interacting with other proteins or ion channels. In this case, I show it interacting with adenyl. Oops, I show it interacting with adenyl cyclase and phospholipase C. After interacting, we want the signal to shut off at some point, right? So it does this by simply hydrolyzing the GDP back into a GDP. So GTP turns to GDP, kicking off a phosphate, boom, signaling stops. Let's put this to an example here. Imagine a cell where the G protein can't hydrolyze GTP back to GDP. What do you think is going to happen? Well, this would mean that the G protein remains active for longer than it should, continually signaling even without a new external message. This could lead to exaggerated or prolonged cellular responses. So now that we've got a good grasp on overall how G protein signaling works, what is it, I'm going to throw a wrench in that understanding and make it a little bit more complicated. There are three different big classes of G proteins you should at least have a peripheral awareness of for the MCAT. GS, GI, and GQ proteins. GS and GI proteins are super straightforward because the S and I means something relevant. GS is going to stimulate the production of cyclic AMP, an important secondary messenger in many cells. Whereas GI proteins, well, the I stands for inhibit. They're going to inhibit cyclic AMP production. They also play roles in regulating ion channels and other cellular pathways. Now, GQ, you know, it, it's a great magazine. And maybe, in fact, that's what it was named after because it seems completely irrelevant. GQ proteins activate another pathway involving phospholipase C, leading to the production of secondary messengers like IP3 and DAG. So how did Q come from phospholipase C? I'm not sure. But what is important is you don't have to memorize what are these different G proteins, what are all of the different downstream proteins. What you want to do is just have a peripheral awareness. It's going to help when you're tackling those biochemistry passages to be like, oh, cool. I've heard of these. This is a subset of a G protein or, oh, CAMP. Yeah, that's downstream of G proteins. That's just going to help you be more comfortable and move more effectively through biochemistry. So don't worry about memorizing IP3 and DAG. Just know that they exist. You've already been exposed to it. So congrats. You've done what you have to do. Now let's move into the second example problem. Given a signaling pathway that involves increased cyclic AMP levels, which G protein class would likely be involved if the external signal is meant to enhance this pathway? In this case, the answer is GS proteins as they stimulate the production of cyclic AMP. And I don't know about you, but when I was studying for the MCAT, it's because I wanted to be a doctor, right? So what is the clinical implication? Why does this matter to what we're actually interested in? Well, defects in G proteins signaling can lead to various diseases. 
For instance, cholera toxins interfere with G protein function, preventing it from turning off. This leads to constant cyclic AMP production and consequently severe water loss in the intestines due to extreme diarrhea. Now on to the final problem for today. If a drug is designed to mimic the action of GI proteins, what would be its likely effect on cyclic AMP levels in the cell? What does GI do? Well, this drug would reduce cyclic AMP levels. As GI proteins, we know inhibit cyclic AMP production. So to conclude our lecture today, G proteins play a monumental role in ensuring that our cells communicate effectively. As future medical professionals, understanding the intricacies of such systems is not only essential for the MCAT, but also for understanding the fundamental mechanisms that drive health and disease. Remember, every cellular process, every pathway is a piece of a larger puzzle that is the human physiology. Until next time, keep those neurons firing and those synapses sharp. Happy studying.